Hey, what's up, everybody? We're playing Black Desert Online. I've been playing this game now for about a month solid, uh, putting in a lot of time every day. I am right now doing a medical treatment, so I have a lot of time to play this game. And when I started, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of information uh, within the game. There, obviously, there's no instruction manual and the tutorials that I saw while they were very informative and they helped me out a great deal there were some very basics that they left out and I wanted to go over some of those today for some of the newer players that are just totally confused as to what they should be doing and how to go about doing it um, so the first thing is when you spawn into the game you're gonna be in this area here Olvia and you're going to be doing a tutorial mission and you won't have your HUD up here your character level won't be there the mini map won't be there um, so you have to do this short tutorial mission which involves just go here go there talk to this guy uh, you know just very basic stuff and then later on you hit a, a practice dummy and um, and that's pretty much the end of the tutorial and you're going to notice after you finish the tutorial on your mini map up at the top right there'll be little silver question marks or gray question marks all over the mini map those represent uh, points of interest. They're people that uh, you can gain knowledge about, or it could be um, monsters that you could gain knowledge about. And we're going to go over why knowledge is very important, but I'll just say if you don't go any further into this video, uh, talk to all these question marks before you leave a zone. Um, you know, do all the quests, talk to all the people, and gain the knowledge because it's very important. And we're going to go over that in just a sec. So. Uh, up at the top left here, uh, don't mind this chat here, up at the top left here, uh, you see your character level and your percent of progress towards the next level. Early on in the game, you're going to be flying through levels. It's very, very simple. Now, if you want to power level your character, basically what you need to do is uh, look at the map. Uh, and find the mobs or the monsters that are your level. So when you first come into the game, like if you just want a power level and you don't care about doing the missions or you know finding the story or anything, and I do recommend doing all the missions and you know taking it slow. But if you do want a power level for whatever reason, um, you just start off doing the the first uh, you know missions until you get up around like 15 or 20, and then um, you know or probably even maybe around. 10 or 12 right and then go to the area that has your level range and just grind mobs there most of the XP you earn and when I say most I mean like 90 plus percent of it is gonna be earned through killing monsters it, your quest turn-ins give you little to no XP at all so it's not like World of Warcraft where you know you're turning in a bunch of quests and gaining levels like that no turning in quests in this game you're gonna gain contribution experience which does not go towards your uh, overall character level and some other odds and ends but it's not how you level so grinding is the way to do it go to these areas where you have um, mobs that are in your range and just like you know for instance you'd start here at the goblins run to maybe f level 15 or 16 come down here to the altar imps run to 19 or 20 and so on here's 22 ish guys um, you know and so you just want to grind mobs that are around your level uh, and you know if they're too difficult for you go grind a little lesser mobs if they're too easy go grind harder ones um, but that's the way to level Okay, so up at the top left of your screen, you see character level, percent to next level. We talked about that. This top number here, this is your skill points. Uh, you earn skill points basically by, by two things. By turning in quests, some quests will give you skill points as a reward, but those are rare. Um, and then you'll earn skill points through killing monsters, and that's how you're going to earn most of your uh, skill points. Now, in order to access your skill tree, you can click on this little... Uh, sword axe icon up at the top. Alternatively, you can hit the K key and that opens up your skill sheet. Um, on the right hand side of your skill sheet, you're going to have this learnable skill. Pretty self explanatory. These are all the skills that you have enough skill points and uh, the prerequisites unlocked to go ahead and learn immediately. Um, these skills that are shown in this list are also highlighted in blue in your skill tree. And you notice that if you look at the skill tree, it's quite comprehensive. There's a large list. Now, I mean, you can see these are all different spells and different tiers of those spells. Um, and we go all the way through. And then there's a whole other page. And you unlock this when you uh, turn 56 and complete the Awakening quest. But these are uh, Awakening skills here. 
and again highlighted in blue means that you can go ahead and learn them and uh, awakening something you can go learn about in another video but basically your character when it's a turns 56 and you do these quests uh, transforms into a beast and you can switch between awakening and standard combat and in awakening mode your most powerful spells are going to be there and so uh, I another uh, point of interest there with awakening is that uh, these are my, my this is my gear right here um, this is my weapon on this character this is an alt character um, and this is my awakening weapon so you have two separate weapons weapons for, uh, depending on which mode you're in, one for awakening, one for regular combat, and then you have your offhand, which applies to both, you know, whichever you're doing, um, but you do have your, your awakening weapon as well as your uh, main hand uh, weapon, so um, that's something to keep in mind, but you don't really need to worry about that until later on. Initially, though, um, you know, this is the skill tree, and <clears throat> there's a lot of information on, you know, that you'll find recommending uh, specific skills and whatnot. It, it's it's probably a good idea to look at those, but don't take those as gospel. You know, uh, read the care, read the skills. Uh, there's skills that are going to maybe suit your playstyle that another person wouldn't want to use, but uh, they'll suit your playstyle depending on whether you PvP or PVE, or uh, maybe you, you you know you just want a bunch of crowd control or you know whatever. Just go over the skills because they're unique to every class, and you might find some things that. Um, really work for you, uh, whereas they don't work for other people. And uh, again, it's quite comprehensive, and I love that about this game. Um, so have fun with that skill tree. Uh, now, these two stats, these are kind of connected together. Um, this this number here is your energy. So I have right now 20 energy out of 177. Uh, what is energy? Um, basically, to do certain actions in the game, it requires energy. Uh, you, you can... Uh, use your energy to harvest things like if you want to cut down trees or go mine rocks or um, skin you know animals or whatever all that costs energy to, to do uh, and your energy regenerates over time uh, up to your your maximum cap um, at, it regenerates at a rate of one energy per three minutes uh, by sleeping in a bed you can increase that to one energy per one minute uh, so three times as much and there are some items in the game that you can use to replenish chunks of energy at one time or that will speed up the replenishment uh, process. Uh, so when you start out in the game, your energy is going to be real low. I think it's like 50 or 60. Uh, in order to gain more energy, what you need to do is you need to, to go to all those question marks and gain knowledge. That's how you increase your energy gap. It's all the little question marks on your mini-map. If you open up your main map, you'll see um, other types of question marks like... Uh, like here's one right here, Dace. This is a person here that I have not yet uh, spoken with and could gain knowledge on, which would in turn uh, probably increase my energy cap. Um, you also can gain knowledge on all the uh, monsters in the game or, or enemies, and uh, they have different tiers of knowledge from C to A, and I think there's even some beyond that, which I haven't even gotten into. But uh, by unlocking all these different knowledges, you're going to gain energy. Um, knowledge is also used for a mini game that uh, when you talk to NPCs, uh, you have the option to strike up a conversation with them. And you use the knowledge that you've gained while exploring the world in order to uh, trigger exciting conversation. And if you have an exciting conversation with an NPC, you gain something called Amity. And Amity is basically your relationship with that person. And that person may offer you benefits uh, of being a close friend with them. Like for instance, right outside my door here in Heidel is a repair smith. If you get your... Uh, uh, he sells some very, very cheap uh, Agarian armor, I think it's called, and it's like um, one fourth or one fifth the cost of what it what it is on the auction house. And so, if you get your Amity up high enough, you can buy it from him for super cheap, and then you can use that uh, as your character. You could use it to um, to uh, improve your gear and all kinds of other things. So, there are benefits to to gaining Amity with the uh, people, NPCs in the game, and again, that uh, that Amity is gained through a mini-game that involves the knowledge that you get. So you want to talk to all the silver question marks that you see. Um, and again, that's going to increase your energy. So the next thing is contribution points. Um, contribution points, unlike energy, do not regenerate over time. You basically, you have a heart, you have a cap, which you can increase Ooh. through doing missions and some other things we'll talk about in a second. Um, but your contribution is basically... Um, it's a currency that you never lose. Like, you can invest your contribution in order to gain access to certain things. And later on, if you decided you didn't want those certain things anymore, you can pull your contribution out and then 
you know, use it elsewhere. So you never lose it. Um, but what do you do with your contribution? Well, for one, if you want to put a farm down somewhere in the game, you have to rent a farm fence. And renting a farm fence, depending on the size of the farm, can cost up to 10 contribution per farm, and you can have up to 10 farms. So with 100 contribution, you could get 10 of the largest farms, which is the maximum, and, you know, farm your heart's content. So um, that's that's uh, something really important. Um, that that you're gonna want to need, uh, gonna want to need to take advantage of. Sorry, I'm reading the the conversation going on with that guy. Um, so, looking at the map here, um, these blue uh, cities. I mean, this is a town. This shows the three little houses. Uh, this this icon is, represents a city. Um, these other nodes um, on the map. These are fought over by players and. Um, that's a whole other topic, but what's important about these nodes is there are resources within these nodes, and you can send uh, workers that you hire and, and pay them in beer uh, to go and harvest the uh, materials that are in these nodes. So, um, uh, so to do that, uh, first you need to unlock the node, um, and to do that, uh, first off, okay, let's just talk about nodes real quick, so and then you'll understand. Um, Here's the main city, Val Valia. Now, you see how you, they, these gold lines are connected to these brown, uh, brownish red colored nodes? That gold line and the brown red colored node means that it is a node that uh, I have unlocked already. So I already have workers. And these two icons uh, that, that look like a pickaxe with a green, that, that represents my worker's progress doing whatever he's doing. So if I click on this, you can see um, this potato farm, I have one worker, and there's this little icon. If I click on it, um, you can see level 27 skilled human worker, um, and he's got 30 minutes remaining just about until he finishes uh, harvesting these potatoes. Um, this is a chicken meat farm, and I have another worker over there, and, it's, and he just finished a cycle, and I got 8 eggs and 14 chicken meat out of it, if you can see there. And, uh, and it also says down here, 8 eggs. So that was good timing, and now he starts another cycle. Now, um, so the, the, those are nodes that I've unlocked. The silver line going to this node here, that represents a node that I can unlock but have not yet. The silver line is telling us that uh, I can unlock it. Um, so if I wanted to unlock it, I would simply click on it, and then I'd click on this Contribution Invest button, and boom. Now when we see it, there's a gold line going to it, which is telling us it's in our chain, and, and it's brownish red because we own it. Now if I wanted to have a worker mine, say, this iron ore here, I would click on the iron node, I'd invest another contribution point, and then the window would pop up here, which looks like this uh something and you would select your worker on this side and then you would like hit the start button over here and that's basically it your worker will go and start working on that um before i talk to you about uh how to get workers uh really quickly um you'll notice now that there there's a silver line connected to this node right because we have not yet unlocked it you remember silver line means that you can unlock it but have not before we invested in this node here, there was no silver line. Well, why wasn't there? Because nodes need to be unlocked in a chain going from a major city. So, uh, for instance, um, let's just go ahead and remove our contribution from this node, and you'll see that there's no longer a silver line connecting this node. And that's because we don't have the previous node in the chain unlocked. Uh, so if we were to come to this node and say we wanted to invest in it, but we can't, because we don't have the previous node, we can click the previous node button, and that will highlight the previous nodes on the map that need to f that we need to unlock in order to connect to the chain. So if we hit previous node and we zoom out a little bit, you can see this beam of light shooting out of this node and this beam of light shooting out of this node. This means that these two nodes are the previous nodes to, to connect to here. Now, it doesn't matter which side we come to this node from. We could invest contribution here, and, um, well, first we'd have to invest contribution here, and then we could invest contribution here, and then we'd be able to unlock this. Or we could come from Velia here, and first we would invest contribution here, boom, 
and then now you see the silver line going so now we could invest here if we wanted to but we don't want to so that's how you invest uh, and unlock nodes um, now there's a lot of nodes in the game and uh, they have all kind of different things copper iron lead tin um, you have some some um, special hard to get ingredients like uh, this Alter Imps Broken Trumpet node here. It produces something called Trace of Savage, which you wouldn't know that to look at it. It doesn't say Trace of Savage. This is Google information, um, and and so I've unlocked it and I'm getting it. So, but the point is that all these different nodes provide different things. Some of them, some of the things that they provide aren't exactly obvious. Uh, you're probably going to want to do a Google search to find out which nodes provide what. Um, but um yeah so that's one idea for money making is i went and grinded the heck out of contribution and i'll tell you how to do that in a minute but um it's extremely i i feel like it's extremely important to get a strong contribution base so that you can start your passive income empire um i've unlocked nodes all over the place and i have workers harvesting what I believe are the best and most expensive um, materials that they can. And uh, they're probably earning me somewhere around like 20 million a day and uh, maybe 15 to 20 million a day uh, passive income. I don't really have to do anything except for take what they harvest and sell it on, on the market. Now, you could take what they harvest and create things with them, craft you know, armor or wagons or boats or whatever you want to do. And I'm also doing some of that. So, um, but in order to unlock the nodes, uh, you're going to need uh, contribution points. And then for the workers, uh, any city you, you are in, you can rent workers. And, and this is uh, Heidel, where I live. And if you come down to this node, or you come down to this icon here, it looks like a pickaxe. This is where you can rent workers. So you would simply go to this guy. Actually, we'll go do that right now. I'll just show you. Just leaving the front door here. And... Uh, we're heading over to the uh, slave trader here. And here's the, he's called the work supervisor. All right, so here's the worker exchange. This is where you can sell uh, work, workers that uh, you've leveled up or whatever. Other people um, will list them here as well. So there's a chance you find a good worker here for a good price. Um, it's Normally, there are a few guys up here, but there aren't right now. To contract a worker, though, you would hit this contract at work button. And uh, I can't have any more workers here right now, but when you hit it, it would tell you that you can invest five energy in order to view a worker. And what that means is basically you trade five energy for the opportunity to look at a single worker. Now, if the worker is poor and you don't like him, then uh, you can request for another five energy to see a different worker. Now, don't get a worker that isn't at least green, okay? If it's a white colored or gray colored and it says, or it says naive in his name, don't, uh, don't get them because uh, those guys are, are basically useless. They won't level up. They're just a waste of space. Um, so your first worker that you rent, um, you don't need any kind of lodging for him. Uh, I guess he stays in your house or, or maybe sleeps in the woods. I don't know. But you don't need any kind of um, lodging for him. However, every additional worker is going to require a bed. Um, now, uh, workers are city-specific. Um, so if you are... Uh, you know, want to hire workers here in Heidel, you need beds here in Heidel. And now another thing about workers is you can't transfer them from city to city. You can have a worker go anywhere on the map as long as it's connected in a chain to his home city, um, but you can't set up his residences in another city. So if you wanted to transfer him, basically what you'd end up doing is selling your worker in the city that you have them and then going to a new city and either renting or buying a worker there. Um, so that that's basically how you would handle that. So um, in order to rent lodging, like if we click on the city icon here, and this goes for all cities, it brings you into the city view and it shows you all the houses. All these houses are unique. Like we'll click on this one. Uh, it shows you have storage. It has refin a refinery in it, a costume mill, and a residence. Okay, but that is unique to this house. You also notice that there are several tiers um, to these buildings. Now, they're all they're all unique. So we got a three-tier storage, a two-tier refinery, and a two-tier costume mill, costume mill, and a residence. Now let's go try another building. Let's try this one. 
Uh, this one also has a three-tier three -tier storage and a two-tier refinery like the other one. However, uh, oh, it also has a residence, but it, it has a horse gear workshop instead of the other thing the other one had. I don't remember what it was. But here, we'll go one more. This one also has a three-tier storage, but it has a two-tier goldsmith shop. It has a three-tier tool workshop. It also has a costume mill with two tiers and a residence. But you can see they're all unique. And some cities are going to offer better uh, buildings than others for certain things. You'll have to figure that out on your own or Google it or whatever. But if you're wondering, like, okay, I want lodging. Um, once you have the map open like this for your city, come up here click on the the middle search feature here and select lodging and you see the little blue arrows that's telling you these are all the buildings that have lodging that you can rent for your workers um, so like this one uh, it's blue right uh, th th that light blue color that means that that's one that we can go ahead and rent so if we click on it we see it has lodging here um, and if we wanted to purchase lodging for another worker it would cost us one contribution point to unlock this and 500 silver coins which is basically nothing um, and what we do is click that and then in like one minute later uh, we would have lodging for an additional worker now this is only a one tier lodging <coughs> so it's going to give us a bed but let's say we wanted a lot of workers right where could we find better lodging so we'd come here to the level and set it to, let's say, 3. Where is the level 3 lodging? Okay. We can see over here, this is level 3 lodging. And here it tells you what you get with this third tier. So the first tier, you get one extra bed. The second tier, you'll get an additional extra bed. And then if you unlock the last tier, the third tier, you'll get an additional two beds. So you'll have four total beds for unlocking the three tiers. Now, what's really interesting here is the contribution points uh, to to hire to, to uh, buy this lodging is the same as that other one tier lodging that we just looked at. Same co one contribution point, solid cost. Each additional tier you unlock does not cost contribution. It just costs a little bit of silver. So this is a really good uh, investment here. This is um, Heidel uh, 7 TAC 3. Uh, and that, I, th I mean, that for one contribution point to get four beds, that's that's a pretty sweet deal. Um, so you see how, how this works. You know, you can sort and look for anything here. Um, storage, for instance. Like, storage is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to increase the amount of... Um, inventory spaces you have in your warehouse which is like down here right there um, you have to you can either pay real money to increase it or you can rent lodging I mean a uh, storage spaces in the city and uh, one other quick thing about um, houses is they work a lot like nodes in that you have to unlock them in a chain um, you can't you can't um, why won't this stop fighting all right we're gonna all right, there we go. You can't unlock, like, the last uh, building in a chain without unlocking the one before. And this is a really good example here. Um, this is Heidel 9-1. This would be the first tier uh, in this chain of 9. 9 uh, tack, whatever. So this is 9-1, this is 9-2, this is 9-3, and this is 9-4. The reason these are white is because these are already rented. The reason this is blue is because we can rent this, but we have not yet rented it. Uh, the reason this is gray is because we haven't unlocked the prerequisite in order to get it. So if we were to come and invest in this 9-2 right here, uh, it wouldn't really matter what we invested in as long as we invested in something. Then we would be able to invest in 9-3. This would turn blue, uh, and this would stay gray, and, and this would turn white. And then once we invested here, this would turn white, and then this one would turn blue. So they have to be unlocked in a chain. Pretty easy. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, you may find that, uh, you know, I think no matter what your play style is, whether um, you're going to be the type that wants to go and grind constantly, or you want to craft a bunch of stuff, or maybe farm, or whatever, or trade, uh, it's going to be important for you no matter what you do to have worker empire going because if you're if you're the grindy type and you don't want to spend any time crafting well this is passive income you can go and grind all day while your workers are, are you know kicking butt and bringing in resources for you to sell on the market if you want to craft stuff well then I mean you'd be much better off harvesting your own resources as opposed to buying everything on the market so uh, you know think about that uh, so uh, you know again to increase your contribution 
and get more freedoms uh, as a result, you're going to want to run a lot of missions. And some of the missions, most of the missions, are going to give you a slight increase in contribution experience, which leads to gaining more contribution points. However, another more efficient way, or another way that you can combine uh, with with um, you know combine with that is is uh, you know you do the missions, but at nighttime when you go to bed, craft a ton of something, right? Either in alchemy or cooking. <clears throat> craft a ton of something and what's going to happen is you're going to gain um you're going to gain these byproducts here so here i can show you because i've just been cooking these byproducts there's five different ones one of them gives you beer another one gives you milk but this this one here is the most important one if you read there you can exchange it for contribution points so if you set your your guy to you know cr craft something all night long like you've got enough bag space to hold everything you need to craft all night long and then you can do it when you wake up in the morning you know well when I wake up in the morning I have about 400 to 550 excuse me uh, it's really late 550 of these things and then I can go and dump that off for like 10 x 10, 10 contribution which is a lot like um, I've only been playing a month. Most of the people in my guild here have been playing for like, uh, you know, close to a year now. A lot of them, and you see their contribution: two ninety-five, two forty-two. This, this guy, one fifty-six. He's a fifty-nine. He's only got his at one fifty-six. I'm at two forty-three, so I'm on par, par with these guys, just about after only a month. And that's because when I go to bed at night, I just crank out tons of. Uh, I'm, I'm making something called essence of liqueur. And the reason I'm making that is because it only needs three separate ingredients, and it only needs one unit of each of those ingredients. So I can hold enough to run 2,000 cycles while I sleep. And when I wake up, he's just about done with it. And um, it works out perfectly, and I get all this extra stuff like contribution. So that's another way to, to get your contribution up really quick. Um, you know, Black Desert... You probably want to slow it down a little bit. I mentioned earlier about grinding up to max level. Um, the way this game works, your level is important, but it's not nearly as important as your gear. And um, you're gonna wanna, you're going to want to uh, slow it down a little bit. Do the side missions. Get to know the world. Get to feel your character. Play around with the skill sheet. Um, you know, and explore the world as opposed to just grinding max level, you're going to end up with more currency that way. You know, you'll have more money. You'll have a better idea what you're doing. And uh, that'd be my recommendation. And another thing is there are some NPCs early on, even later on, that give you very useful information about how to do specific things in the game. Like, for instance, if you're trying to uh, create... Um, uh, an alloy, you know, out of a couple of different types of ore. Um, you know, you, it might not be obvious how to do that. And with a quick Google search, you could find out. But however, if you pay attention to what the NPCs are telling you in the game, they're going to explain all that stuff to you. So um, NPCs have, like, useful information often in this game, which is um, unusual for an MMO. I'm used to, uh, you know, games like WoW where, I mean no one bothers to read anything that the NPCs say because it's just freaking nonsense. So, um, you know, slow it down, talk to the NPCs. I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, talk to all the question marks, like I said. Um, your Black Spirit, uh, what you're going to find out during the tutorial mission is your buddy, and he is going to give you all the quests that you do that are along your main storyline. Excuse me. So if you... Do any quests at all, make sure that you're doing the ones the Black Spirit gives you because they're going to progress you from zone to zone and he's going to give you boss scrolls and things that, that uh, you know, and gear and, and awesome upgrades and, like, armor stones and just stuff. It's You, got, you really have to do his uh, storyline. And then when you get uh, to the Awakening um, at level 56, he's also going to give you a series of quests that you have to complete in order to awaken your character and gain the awakened weapon. Um, now, a separate topic, uh, which we're not going to go over in detail, but your gear in this game 
is basically um, it's basic gear. Okay. Here, we'll, actually, we'll go to the market because my character doesn't have any gear really or not anything. Let's um, I'm wearing Grunel armor on my main character, so we're gonna search Grunel. And we're gonna sort by price. Um, this is a base level Grunel armor. You can see here it's three hundred twenty-seven thousand. And uh, here's a plus one Grunel armor. Um, this is 560,000. It's a couple hundred thousand more. So what that is basically is um, when you, you're going to want to find the set gear that, that, you, that fits you and get the base level one. And then you're going to use these things called black stones to upgrade your gear. And essentially, you open up your black spirit menu here. And really quickly, you're not able to do this until you're about level 15. You have to do a quest first that this Black Spirit's going to give you in order to, um, in order to, uh, in order to unlock the enhancement. Basically, what you do is you hit the enhancement button, and you throw in your item that you want to upgrade, and then on the other side you throw in these black stones. And you're going to be getting black stones from the Black Spirit. You're going to be getting from getting them from mobs that you're killing, from quest rewards, all kind of places. And so, and there's separate ones for armor and weapons, but you throw your piece of armor in there, you throw your black stone in there, and you hit enhancement, and boom, it'll upgrade to plus one, and then plus two. Each level that you upgrade your gear, it's going to increase its its uh, defense points, um, you know, by, I believe it's five per level. Um, so that's how you upgrade your gear. The same goes for weapons. You put your weapon in here, you put a weapon black stone in there, and you hit enhancement, and it upgrades. Now, um, up to level five... Uh, it's a guaranteed success, 100%. You're going to upgrade. No problems, right? After that, there's a chance that you fail when you try to upgrade. And when you fail, uh, you lose your weapon, uh, your Blackstone, and you also lose a little bit of your max durability for a weapon. So, you know, normally a brand new weapon is going to have 100 out of 100 durability. Um, if you fail once on an upgrade, it takes it down by five max durability. So that doesn't mean that it reduces your durability to 95 out of 100. It reduces it to 95 out of 95. Uh, so the maximum you can repair your durability up to comes down by five points each time you fail. Now, eventually your gear is going to get whittled all the way down to like 20 durability maximum. And you can't get it above that. Unless you uh, go and essentially to repair it, you need the item that you want to fix, okay? And then you need the a base level version of the item um, that that you want to want to fix. So if you had a Grunel chess piece, we were looking at Grunel a minute ago. Um, let's say it was a plus five chess piece or plus seven chess piece and you wanted to repair it, you would need a, a base level Grunel armor chest piece that has no upgrades done to it whatsoever. And then you would come to this repair smith or any repair smith, hit the repair button, and then hit the recover max durability. And you'd simply load your, your, your uh, piece of gear that you want to fix the durability on. And then you would load the base level item into the other window and then hit recover max durability. Each base level item that you put into your, your upgraded one is going to recover 10 maximum durability per item. Um, so if you took your piece of armor all the way down to 20 durability, then you would need 8 of the base level items in order to increase it back to max durability. Um, so that's important to note, and, uh, and that's something that's very confusing uh, to a lot of people. It certainly was to me a few mo uh, about a month ago when I started. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, uh, you know, the game's been out a while. There's some really, excuse me, I'm so sorry, man. I've been up for a long time and it's late. Um, there's some, you know, people that have been around for a very long time and have amazing gear and they're going to one shot you and, uh, but not everyone's like that. So, uh, win the fight you can. And if you lose, it's no big deal. It's always a learning experience. Uh, and uh, the PvP in this game is great. Um, the end game sort of uh, node warfare is a ton of fun. We actually just took... Where is it? One of these nodes here. Is this it? No. Is that it? No. I don't know. It's somewhere down here. 
But, uh, and then we have another, anyway, it's a lot of fun, you know, you build towers, you build defenses around your towers, you try to assault the other, uh, you know, guilds that are fighting for control, or, anyway, it's a lot of fun, um, and, uh, that's, that's basically it for that, I mean, that's something you have to watch a separate guide on, so, again, brand new players, slow it down, talk to all the question marks, um, try to do all the quests that you can, um, you know, you have in any city you go to, you have a warehouse manager and a guy that sells you workers. Um, you can rent more lodging and more uh, warehouse space and in any of the cities by unlocking buildings that have those uh, types of store, you know, storage and whatnot that you're trying to unlock. Um, you know, and get your passive empire going, your passive, um, you know, worker empire going. So, you know, you can leave your computer running all night long and uh, wake up in the morning with a bunch of resources in your hangar and, uh, and that's, that's really it um, I can make more detailed videos about specific aspects of the game such as um, you know crafting different things or trading or um, you know farming if there's anything specific that y'all want to know let me know and I'll make a video about it but um, you know I hope you enjoy the game if you have any questions let me know and uh, I hope you stick around um, the combat in this game is so much fun. It feels like a MMO version of Tekken. You know, you do combos and stuff on your keyboard and mouse. A lot of fun. Uh, very unique. I, I know there are other games like this out there with controls like that. I've never played one. Um, so it's a lot of fun for me right now. And that's basically it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Like, comment, subscribe. If there's anything else I can help you with, let me know. And uh, that's it. Take care. Enjoy the game.